Hey there. Mr. Repsion, uh, Daniel, recently uploaded a video about why he hasn't really wanted to show his face. And he's been having a lot of depression and self-doubt and, and anxiety. And I appreciate that he uploaded that video. Um, I had been wondering what was going on with him, and I, I, I knew there had to have been something. But I didn't know it was something like that. And uh, I'm kind of sorry that I was so harsh to him uh, recently. Um, anyway, uh, anxiety can be pretty nasty. And when someone reaches a, you know, YouTube celebrity status kind of thing, people do look at you like you're not a person anymore. And some people were being really nasty to him. Oh, you're just so emo, why don't you just get out of it? And there's other people, there's that, that standard answer that a lot of potheads seem to have. Um... Oh, just do some weed, it'll take care of it. Oh, you don't know that. You know, as a former pothead myself, you know, I, I know... Uh, but I I still do weed like... like uh, I'll have... On average, it's about a hit to two hits a month. You know. Oh, squeaky, squeaky. Um... But uh, one of the main reasons why I had to stop it, it was making, it was increasing my anxiety and paranoia and a lot of my issues by a tenfold. And some people make it sound like weed isn't really addictive. I mean, it may not be truly physically addictive like a number of other drugs, but it's certainly mentally addictive. Um, and just because it's safer than the other recreational drugs uh, doesn't mean it's a some good thing to get into some major habit of it, you know? Um, but yeah, oh, my anxiety. Hmm. I have to be in the right scenario, the right group of people, the right place to do weed and not have it be a horrible experience. And, and, I, and even though it was a horrible experience, I'd just keep doing it. It was, it was really weird. Um, but, yeah, there are people trying to tell Daniel, oh, just keep doing weed, just do weed. Not necessarily keep doing weed, because I don't know whether he does it or not. But we are in a state that it's legal, so... Um, and I mean, for some people, maybe it does help anxiety, but there's others that it doesn't. Um, so... The thing that got me to real, re truly realize that I... This it isn't something I should do all the time is when I was in Eureka. In a not that great of a scenario. I didn't know anyone there. Uh, I was living at this place with a uh, meth lady in the back who sold her body for meth and would bring people over saying, I'm going to brush a fucking faggot, you know, kind of thing. And I mean, I, when I was there, I was just given weed. People just gave me weed. And I just kind of realized, well, I don't, I don't need this. When I was there in, in Eureka, though, I even though there were many points where I was very, very happy, uh, I think that was when I really hit bottom, was when I was in Eureka. Anyway, um, but Daniel's video, 
um, gave me the courage to talk about something that I've been dealing with for about a week and a half, oh no, about almost two weeks now, a week and a half, two weeks, something around there. And this health scare that I've been dealing with, uh, it could be anxiety, it could be hypochondria, um, could be psychosomatic. And it, when someone says the word psychosomatic, it's not say, that's not saying that what you're experiencing is all purely in your mind. Sometimes what someone is thinking about or what they are experiencing in their mind can actually cause physical things. Those physical things they're experiencing are actually happening to them, but it's still because of something in their mind, because it, 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 it like triggers the body, so to speak. It's it's so. Um, but the reason why I hadn't wanted to talk about it is because everyone was I I was assuming that not everyone, but I was assuming that a lot of people would say, "Oh, it's because of your weight." Well, this issue that I'm that I've been dealing with is something that I dealt I occasionally dealt with when I was really skinny. You know, when I was 128, 130 pounds. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, I've been dealing with irregular heartbeats. Um, heart palpitations. And usually when I would get those, it was from some sort of reaction from a medication. And in this case, it still could have been that, because for about three years, I had been taking about a quarter pill of Imodium AD. Um, ranging from every day to every, the most I would usually be without it was every two days, sort of thing. And, you know, I wasn't taking a full pill like some people that I read online, and they have really started to have some issues, but uh, there's still a quarter of a pill. I'm still continuing to take that, and that can cause... Uh, irregular heartbeats after a while. So, um, after about a week of me not taking it, um, I mean, it took several days to uh, not have major issues that were that was representing why I took it in the first place. Um, but the uh, heart palpitations have decreased exponentially. Um, but uh, let me state this too, okay? When I was first really starting to get them, I went to, uh, after the second day, I went to the ER. They did several EKGs. They did several blood tests. They did several physicals. They couldn't find anything except they would note when they're, they're taking my pulse you know, at certain times, that, oh, oh, I noticed that. It's just, there is a slight difference. I mean, this isn't like a major heart palpitations, but it's something where, you know, you'll, you'll hear it beating, you know, dit, 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 you know, there'll be this point where it just, it, it like pauses for just a second. Or sometimes it'll be dit, 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 it'll be like that, you know. It's just not fully even. Um, now, I'm aware that it could be. It could be related to my weight. But, again, you know, I'd had this when I was really thin, too, occasionally. But it never lasted this long, so... Um, knock on wood, knock on wood, today I haven't had any of them, 
which has been very nice. But uh, I then went to, you know, after I did the, had the, went to the ER, the next day after that, I went to see, try to establish a regular doctor again, because my last uh, primary care provider was, uh, I don't know why I put that in quotes. <laughs> my last primary care provider was at um, a place, clinic called Country Doctor in Seattle, and they're very good, but it's in Seattle, and I'm not near Seattle anymore. That was from when I was in uh, living in Renton with um, Tyler and the Three Bears that I often called Tyler and the Three Meth Addicts because they had some issues. Um, supposedly their issues are getting better, but they still haven't paid rent. Anyway, blah 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 blah. You don't need to. I don't need to go into details about that. But uh, so. This clinic that I've been going to, it's a, a community health care Parkland uh, clinic. Um, and I, I had went there quite a bit before then, and I mean, before I moved to Renton, that's, that was the clinic that I had went to. They seem to go through, doc, they, doctors move in and out of there though, so. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. They have two main doctors there. One of them is the worst doctor I've ever been to, ever. And the second one is the best doctor I've ever been to. Go figure, right? Uh, the first doctor that I had made an appointment with and I went to see, I'm trying to find out about why I'm getting these, these heart palpitations. And she looks at my record and sees that I uh, have bipolar. And so she spends almost the entire appointment trying to uh, force medications on me for bipolar and she's asking why don't I want it to, to take anything for it and the more I explain why the more nervous she starts to act I mean she has all this body language just, just like like she's just like totally nervous totally like I am really uncomfortable now um it was really weird um but she would, she started, she went from treating me like a mental patient in a, in a psych ward to treating me like a mental patient in a psych ward who's a junkie. And the more I would explain what, you know, these things that I've went through and how much I have improved and, and these, these huge strides I've taken in improving my life, she treated all of it like I hadn't achieved anything and that I should just pump myself full of medications again. You know, never mind uh, that I've been on 20 medications in the past, never mind that the last medication, and it, which actually worked really well, destroyed my creativity and almost caused my suicide three times. Uh, no, never mind any of that. Never mind that I finally found, you know, that I have the right to my own thoughts and the right to my own conscience and all that sort of thing. No, never mind any of that. Oh, that was the one that really made her uncomfortable. I think she's probably really religious or something. I don't know. But, you know, and when I dis had discussed with her that, uh, you know, I am aware that uh, some of these these thing the, these heart palpitations could potentially be caused by panic. It could be a bit psychosomatic, and it could be. Uh, you know, I mean, I thought honesty was the best policy, but with with a doctor like this, it's not. Um, and then it could be in hypochondria, you know. And. Uh, so I said, you know, can I, maybe I could get a lorazepam or something, uh, just, a, just a few pills to, uh, she's like, no, 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 I, I can't do that. That, that could uh, send you right back into drug addiction. And I'm like, uh, I, then I explained to her, uh, most of the time people, if they're still dealing with that kind of, that kind of thing, they couldn't do 
their drug of choice, you know. Oh, let's let's just do one. Let's you know, like like they couldn't have a hit of weed, like on average, like once a month. They they couldn't just do that. They would go right back into the habit, you know, full fledged. You know. I try and I try to explain her. I'm not. It's not like I'm wanting some full, full, you know, thirty pills or something. I just want a few to make to see if when I do have these heart palpitations, whether or not, if I take that, does it stop them? And if it does, then we know that it's related to panic. And if it doesn't, then we know that it's something else. Um, well, I could lose my license, she says. And uh, eventually she, well, I can give you a few. I can give you, you know, three. Um, but uh, we're going to have to give you a do a piss test on you to make sure that you're not doing other drugs. And I'm like, really? Okay. Uh, well, it's it's our policy. It's 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 the law since 2013. And I'm like, um, not really. Uh, I'm, I'm, I didn't say this to her. I didn't want to get into an argument with her, but I'm like, uh, other places didn't have that policy. They just didn't, some places didn't, don't want to give those things out like candy or anything like that because they can have some pretty nasty effects if someone gets addicted to them. Nasty. I mean, they're a, they're a nar narcotic, um, but it's not some legal thing like that, but, you know. Uh, but you know, after after all was said and done, she was like, with with all that, and then she, oh well, okay, I guess we're done. I, I gotta go, and I'm like, wait, I came here to to find out what's what's causing these heart palpitations. Maybe I could get I could see a specialist or something, or you know, a heart specialist, something, uh, just to figure out what's going on. Well, have you had a physical recently? It's like, well, I kind of had one at the, at the at the emergency room. Well, we're gonna we, we should uh, uh, schedule a, a a physical. And have you had a men's health exam recently? Well, no. Well, we'll schedule those. Okay, I gotta go. Bye. But the way she made me feel and the way she treated me, like a like a complete wing nut and a junkie. Man, I, I had never been treated that poorly <laughs> by a doctor, ever. Ever. It was just nasty. Um, yeah, it's funny. As, well, as she's trying to cram these drugs down my throat, she leaves, she leaves the room to come back with this booklet so she can, she can go through more, more of these medications. Well, have you done that? Have you tried this? And have you tried this? And you tried this? I'm like, I'm trying to tell her I'm just not interested. I, I would rather not do medications for this. Well, it's not it's not really a good thing that you're not on medications for this. And then she'd turn around and every three or four medications she'd mention, well, I'm not trying to push drugs on you. Yeah, you are. That's exactly what you're doing, bitch. Of course, I didn't say that, but I just I was just becoming more and more hurt. By the time I left that office, I was in tears. All the, my, on the drive home the whole time, I was bawling my eyes out. And, uh, you know, I did the piss test. I had the prescription that I had to uh, have the nurse, because she was supposed to give it to me, but uh, the, the nurse had to, I had to tell the nurse, hey, well, you know, I, I didn't get the prescription or anything. I, this, 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 you know, this this appointment was not very was not very good, um, and so she had to go bug the doctor, and finally I got the prescription. But anyway, crying as I get home, and then I thought about it for a while. I said, you know, the, the way I was treated here wasn't right, because I was putting it all on myself, like I like questioning all this this progress that I've made in these past few years questioning whether or not I, you know, what did I, have I really progressed? I said, wait a minute. Yes, I have. I've made a lot of, of progress here. So I went back to the clinic again. 
talk to the receptionist say, here, I'm, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to fill out this prescription because all it's going to do is going to make that doctor think, well, he's just a junkie. And they said, wait a minute, wait, uh, let's, let's have you talk with the, uh, uh, the office manager. And so I talked with the office manager for about 20 minutes about what had happened. And, uh, and she was like, well, don't let anyone make you feel like, uh, uh, like you haven't progressed. She was almost in tears. I was in tears a couple times during when I was talking with her. Um, she's like, let, I want to have the, uh, the medical, the person that does basically the hiring of the doctors. Uh, I want to have that guy I'll give you a call. Yeah, he should call you over this next week. And so just later that day, he gave me a call. Talked for about a half hour on the phone. And uh, he was kind of appalled at what, uh, at how the doctor had treated me. He's like, yeah, uh, this isn't the 1950s. Uh, you know, if a doctor finds out that you have some sort of mental issue that doesn't suddenly remove your, your, your being human or, you know, it doesn't make you suddenly lower than her, that that wasn't right. And uh, he was upset that, that she didn't do, didn't lift a finger to even try to help what I even came in there for. And, uh, and then we made, you know, and he was like thankful that I had, had contacted them and, and did all that. And we're like, yeah, well, if she's doing that to, to me, she's probably doing it to other people too. Um, I said, I said to him, you know, I, it, it, she was concerned that uh, showing supposed concern that, that she might get me back into a drug habit. Well, the very things that she told me and the way I was treated was about to send me back into a drug habit. If I wouldn't have, have contacted you guys and come back, I probably would have turned back to, to I would have probably tried to go just smoke myself into a stupor. I probably would have started that kind of habit back because the thing that would make me do it was self-doubt. Was a lack of self-esteem. Was this feeling like I don't have any worth. That's what, what, that's what made me do drugs. That was the primary thing that made me do drugs. And she was, you know, about to send me right back to that again. And I stood up for myself and said, no, the way I was treated wasn't right. So anyway, um, so we set another appointment for the next day with the other doctor they have there. And that doctor was the best doctor I'd ever had, ever. Fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, she's from India. And some people seem to have this problem with those from India, um, but she spoke really well. I mean, she, def she obviously had an accent, but best doctor I've ever had. Listened to everything that I had, listened to every concern. I could even ask, when she showed just how knowledgeable and, and she was, I... I would ask some kind of obsessive questions. I said, well, here's an obsessive question. And I'd ask her about something. And she had the answer immediately in great detail. She was able to give me information that completely got rid of my anxiety around certain issues. She set me up an appointment with a heart specialist. And uh, she gave me a referral to a place where I can get a uh, colonoscopy to deal with some of the issues of, of why I was on the Imodium AD for so long. And, uh, man, she's just fantastic doctor. Uh, as soon as I was done with that appointment, I went to the front and said, I want her to be my primary care provider. She's awesome. She's awesome. I, I just need, I need, she, she's, I, I just told that office that she's the best doctor I've had. And, uh, so come Monday, I have a, an appointment with a heart specialist. They're going to give me this heart monitor for me to wear for a 24 hour, for one 24 hour period. And then I'll give the heart monitor back and they'll go look at the results of that. 
and go from there. Um, so, but uh, again, the reason why I didn't want to talk about a lot about talk about this stuff that's been kind of making me not that happy of a person recently is. Uh, I didn't want to see all the all this stuff of people saying, "Well, it's because you're fat. You need to lose weight, dumbass," or something like that. And it's not. I mean, it could be related to my weight, but it, it's actually not that likely based off of some of my history. Um. I just didn't want to see that shit. I didn't. Um. So. You know, I didn't want to be vulnerable in that area, similar to how Daniel didn't want to be emotionally vulnerable in the areas related to uh, his anxiety and, and his depression and, and his self-doubt that, that he's going through right now. I'm really sorry that I, I again, I, I feel, I feel kind of bad that I treated him kind of poorly when it comes to some of these videos that, I, that I'd made about him recently. Um, had I have realized, uh, I would have just said, well, he's acting this way be right now because he's going through some shit. So, anyway, wow, this video is long. Uh, but, uh, anyway, uh, thanks for listening. And... Yeah, I don't know what more to say. <laughs>